Hey there, Colby Sharp. I hope you are having a wonderful day. I cannot believe how quickly this summer went by. I believe you go back to school two weeks after I do, and I hope during those two weeks you spend as much time with your family, with book stacks, reading Newberry books, and just enjoying the moments before all the craziness begins. It's so much fun to go back to school, but the first week, of, the first week, the first month of school is always very stressful, but very rewarding and fun. All right, Mr. Sharp, I'm here to talk about the winner of the 1957 Newberry Medal, Miracles on Maple Hill. I cannot believe that we're all the way to 1957. I think that means we've read 37 Newberry Medal winning books this year. Now, that may not sound impressive to some people, but you and I know that is an impressive number of Newberry Medal winning books because many of them have been very challenging, long, laborious, tiring, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. This is, I believe, one of my favorite Newberry books that we've read so far. I think I enjoyed it more than you did. Um, it made me want to visit the northeastern region of the United States and on about page 150 I realized this book takes place in Pennsylvania which is not northeast which is not the northeast but it still made me want to go to Vermont and New Hampshire it had a feel that it that it took place there it didn't feel like rural Pennsylvania to me maybe I don't know enough about rural Pennsylvania of the 1950s um, I enjoyed the family dynamic in this book I thought it was interesting how it really revolved around the father, the father having been a prisoner of war, the father uh, having, I guess we would say, post-traumatic stress syndrome. So I, I thought it was interesting the way they handled that, that the family walked on eggshells around the father, the family went off uh, to the wilderness essentially to have a place for the father to recuperate. I loved the relationship between the girl and the brother. The brother was totally book smart and was an adventurer and didn't really like other people to get involved in his business, but he did love his sister. I liked the relationship with Mr. Chris, I believe was his name. I liked the relationship with the brother and the hermit down the street. Again, it's an opportunity to realize that we shouldn't judge people without getting to know them. I think that's a theme that's coming up in many of the, the Newberry books lately. Uh, a couple of things I was disappointed in. There again, there was some sexism in this book about the roles of women, so that bothered me. There were some digs at Native Americans, which bothered me, but overall, I I really enjoyed this book. I enjoyed the ending <laughs> where you met the, the truant officer. I believe her name was uh, Annie Get Your Gun. I want to see if I can find that illustration because she just did not look like a nice woman. But she ended up, as you know, she ended up being a pretty nice woman and ended up helping them in the end. So I thought this was a good book to show kids about everyday miracles and about how sometimes we have to take care of ourselves and the way a family works together and sticks together. So I did, 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 did definitely enjoy this book, but there were a few things as I said that bothered me. All right, Mr. Sharp, my plan was to do a blog post today for picture books, I believe it's called PB 10 for 10, where people select 10 picture books that they cannot live without. They do a blog post and then, um, have a hashtag for people to follow on Twitter. I believe it's PB10410 or, or something like that. I'll I'll post below this what I'm referring to because I have this one take rule. I can't go look it up or start over right now. So these are 10 books that I would rescue if my house were on fire. All right. Now for my 10 for 10 post, I only selected books that A, I own and B, are signed. So here are the 10 books that I would rescue in a fire. I would rescue The Library by Sarah Stewart, and I will show where they are signed to, because that's kind of fun. And you and I met Sarah Stewart together. This is one of my all-time favorite picture books. I totally relate to the main character in this book, where all she ever wants to do is read, that eventually her house has so many books that she ends up donating them all to the town and they named the library after her. I just love this book. I also love finding her stuffed animal on every page. The stuffed animal is always hidden somewhere, and it's always fun with students to have them uh, find the stuffed animal. So you can see him sticking out of her pocket there. You can see him on the stair there, etc. Book number two is The Gentleman Bug by Julian Hector. 
again, I have kind of a theme here. These are both books about books because the gentleman bu bug ends up falling in love with the librarian. Knuffle Bunny. Every collection needs Knuffle Bunny. A Chrysanthemum by Kevin Hankus. And because of time, I'm not going to talk about all of them. My Friend Rabbit. I believe My Friend Rabbit was the first signed Caldecott medal winner that I ever received. Uh, I think I only own two signed Caldecott medal winners. I believe this book and I have one other, Kitten's First Full Moon. All right, there's My Friend Rabbit. You Will Be My Friend by the wonderful Peter Brown. Thank You, Mr. Falker by Patricia Polacco, a book that's very difficult to read without crying. Chalk by Bill Thompson. This book is amazing. And two more, How Rocket Learned to Read by Tad Hills. And the new book just came out, the, the companion book to this, Rocket Writes a Story. And the last of my ten is Pete the Cat and His Four Groovy Buttons by James Dean and Eric Letwan. So those are my ten books that I would rescue if my house were ever on fire. All right, Mr. Sharp, I'm going to go because I have many things to do to get ready for school. I hope you are having a wonderful day, and I can't wait to continue reading and talking to you about Newbery Medal-winning books. See you later, and happy reading.